scholar. I embrace African beauty, culture, and values. I reject European definitions of beauty, culture, and values. I embrace the principles of my truth, justice, order, balance, harmony, righteousness, and reciprocity. I will honor the Creator. I will always remember and honor my ancestors. I will always respect myself, my elders, and other Africans. I am a strong African. I will learn and teach our story and heritage. I am disciplined, focused, and intelligent. I will always think critically. I will fight for my people. I embrace the Nguza Saba, Umoja, Kuchachakalia, Ujima, Ujima, Nia, Kumba, Imani. I will never give up the struggle to empower Africans. I am a role model for my people. There will not be a contradiction between what I think, say, and do. I will always love and care for my people. I will wear African children to build our nation. I will always prevail and triumph. At Akame Institute, we ask for the war horn that calls forth our courage, readiness, and actions. Greetings, family. My name is Mwala Mubarudi. I am the co-founder and co-director of Akame Institute. Wanted to talk to you all about some of the things that we do here, uh, our reason for being, um, things that com the community has contributed to us because um, we want warriors to know what we do here. We want the community to know the kind of, of uh, work, the kind of the level of dedication that we have here at Akaben toward the education of, of warriors. Um, I, could, I could begin by saying one of the things that Jairi Clark talked about was really impressive because he talked about a priesthood. He talked about identifying children based upon their talents, based upon their skills, and then grooming them for their roles on the front line. We named our school Akaban Institute because there is a war going on that African people are being victimized by. We are um, being um, destroyed. There is a process of genocide that's going on against African people, and we need to have our children prepared. Uh, this comes down to the, to the, or brings up, the basic idea of Akaban Institute in terms of what we're trying to do. And we've been asked that on a number of occasions. And the, the, the closest that, that I've ever been able to come to describing what we're trying to do here is we're trying to prepare each of our children so that if you had a couple, a male and female child, left on an island, or they were the only two left on this planet, they would have the knowledge and the will um, to rebuild society, to rebuild African society, not just any society, but to rebuild African society. So our job is to give them the skills, to give them the knowledge, to give them the know-how. And of course, we, we try to um, operate and think and, and teach, or should I say educate, out of the tradition of our ancestors. And our ancestors um, understood that there was not a disconnect between what you thought and what you said and what you did with your hands. Uh, we think that is very, very important here. Um, I don't know if I want to say luckily, but uh, this house that we're in now that I'm going to, I guess, take you on a short tour of, um, when we moved in here, it was a fixer-upper. And um, if I, just a brief story, I've always wanted to build a house, but my back did not allow that. So we got the next best thing. At the time that we got this house, having a school was not, in, in my vision, the school was basically any odds dream for years and years and years and, and I thought it was a, a, a wonderful dream and of course um, our daughter she was instrumental in us starting the school because the institution that she was at decided not to have a high school and she was getting ready to go to high school and of course uh, there were no public schools that she was going to attend and we didn't know any private schools that we wanted her to be at so that closed all the options and that's how this um, Ackerman Institute was started but again as I said we have attempted to uh, blend the two into one, into a model that works where the children learn how to use their hands as well as their minds. They learn how to, uh, in terms of the mind part, they learn how to think. This is the most important priority here, not rope memorization, 
um, but thinking, of course, information goes along with that, but the thinking is the priority, making them do exercises and engage in conversations that require deeper thinking than just giving simple answers or repeating what's back in the book. Um, but in terms of, of the connection between hands and uh, mind, every year here, except for the last two years, the children have wood projects that they do. Everything that I do with this fixer-upper, um, they've been involved in. So, I mean, I, I look at some of the things that was just in this room. This stand right here, which I just cut the top off of because I needed this room up here, uh, was built by students and myself. This stand right here, which the bottom was cut off of a number of years ago, was a stand for a globe that we had in the class, but we ran out of room for it, so we needed to put it in a place that was out of the way, but we would still have access to it and be able to bring it out to the table. So we cut the legs off of it and brought it here. That also was something that the students and I built. This podium, which is, which is one of the things I guess the students are the, the proudest of, this was built with plywood and um, some two-by-twos and, of course, some black paint and a little red paint. And, and this podium, podium was handmade by the students. Um, and I and can talk about other things in here, too. There's so many things. Uh, we have to talk about this is not just Enia and uh, my school. This is the community school. This room right here is a great example of that in terms of what is in just this room right here. Talk about the other rooms and with the main classroom. But this room right here, this blackboard right here was, was brought to us by a grandfather who worked on a college campus and buildings and grounds. And he knew that I loved like blackboards, didn't like whiteboards. So they were renovating one of the classrooms and there's a knock on the door on a Saturday morning. And he's out there with one of his buddies and they bring the board in, you know, for it to use, use here. This timeline right here was brought to us by Professor Griff because he wanted the students to have that, to have access to it. These two um, African perspectives of the world and African history, these are, were given, excuse me, these were traded uh, for some DVDs by a brother in Florida, but the value of these relative to the DVDs um, we know are, is, is, is not comparable. The stool that's right there with the sand coat on it, that stool was brought, brought here by a brother in New Jersey because he thought that the students needed a place where they could sit down and think whenever they weren't thinking the way that they should be thinking. The flags that are hanging above that door were, were gifts. These were, were gifts. All of these things, this was brought, brought given to us by a family in South Carolina because they want the students to learn and to understand. All of these things came from people who want to contribute to the education of children at Occupant Institute. And of course, the chessboard is, is here. This is um, part of the thinking aspect of Occupant Institute. Chess is part of the curriculum here, just like math, just like science, just like language arts. The first thing that they do in the morning is chess. It's a half an hour of chess mm -hmm. every day. Of course, now we have one of the babas who um, wants to work on the children's vocabulary. So one or two of these mornings are part of those mornings are now consumed with, with, with intensive vocabulary, but still, chess remains at the center. And the reason why we chose chess is because chess is our game. This is a creation of African people and because it makes you think better. Um, if, Bob, if you follow me out in the hallway, because this is the main, main classroom, but I wanted to show folks um, other things about Occupant Institute. Uh, and in fact, this is going to maybe the first time that, that people really get an inside view. Oh, I forgot about the, the Ankh up there. This was a gift from family in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, it is the centerpiece, obviously, in the room because we know that we're supposed to be about Ma'at and that the Ankh stands at the center of who we are as family-centered people. Uh, I'm talking about things that have been built here that students assisted. We needed a place to put our books. We had bookcases all over the place, but they were uh, in the way everywhere. And in fact, these bookcases here are, are like remnants of that. Um, and in fact, this is where all of the students' books are kept, on this side. These cases right here were built from scratch. We took off the outside of this wall and we built these bookcases onto the wall. These are in-wall bookcases made out of uh, 2 by 12 by what have you's and well, 2 by 12 by 8's and uh, two by twos and some plywood and plywood backing them up so there's plywood between them and the wall. It took approximately three months to make build these bookcases and a lot more was involved than simply throwing together some wood because if you look down you see there's a straight line. Mm -hmm. Easy to sell. So this was math. 
when we rebuilt the porch, the students had to calculate how many pieces of tongue and groove would be needed for the porch so that I wouldn't have to buy, wouldn't buy too much. It was a math problem. Okay, we heard people talking about young folks complain because these things, math, science, etc., etc., were not practical, so we tried to make it as practical as possible. Also, um, this, this doorway right here is a product of, of students and my work. That uh, in Chin Chin, red and Chin Chin on the black background, that's a gift from uh, an artist sister who's now one of our ancestors um, in South Carolina. This humongous black. We, I mean, I could talk about our gifts forever. People don't understand that you, there, there is, there is not enough money from tuition to pay for good private institutions. We are completely and totally independent. We have never accepted, accepted. We have never accepted government funding at any level whatsoever. Every um, thing that has been paid for here at Occupant Institute, and Occupant Institute is in our house for a reason. Number one, because it, it, it makes the children more comfortable. Number two, it allows me to do writing and, and to attend to students at the same time. And, and everything is centrally located. However, things here have to be paid for. And we've been able to keep this. This is our 14th year. We've been able to keep this going for 14 years because of the community. Uh, not because I went and got a job someplace or any of y'all got a job someplace or, or we went in and, and got a grant or became chartered, if you will. It's because the community believes in what we're doing and we believe in what we're doing, so they support it. This humongous flag. This is a, this is a red, black, and green flag with uh, Marcus Garvey airbrushed on here. A brother in, um, I believe it's Oklahoma, and I hope he can forgive me if it's wrong. They, he had it, he had it made years ago, and they used it at community events, and it it just sat there. And he wanted it to be some place where it could be useful, so he gave it to us, and we put it up here on the wall to hold it until we can find a better place to put it, or there's a community place created for it. But the point is that we have individuals all over who understand what we're trying to do and are trying to contribute to that, who are trying to make, make this work. This bathroom, this is a product of two grandfathers here, where this was a closet and the children would come in our bathroom and, and you know how children are, they leave everything a mess. That's so, our guest bathroom, which hasn't been completed yet. Of course, you can see we're still at work. We're still at work here in terms of the sheetrock, in terms of the, the, the lighting, and we've got electricians in the community, we've got plumbers certified in the community who are assisting us um, in doing this process. This is um, my room, if you will, my office. This is one of the classrooms, but now the other two classrooms are, are, are oh, I want to show this real quick. This is about one of the Bibles in the community work. In fact, this whole room is, is one of the Bibles work. And that room, finished room right there, also one of the Bobbers, and I'm really proud uh, to say that I know him because we've had a lot of people over the years who have um, wanted to assist. Some could, some could not. Some, I mean, sometimes we make promises that we can't fulfill for whatever reason. And we had people over the years saying, well, what, what can I do? How can I help? And I tell them, and of course, they wouldn't fulfill their promise. Um, or promises. But this Baba came in and he said, well, what can I do you know, to help? And he said, I'm sort of doing this for selfish reasons because my daughter's here and I wanted to really look at a good room and of course this room was sheetrock and screws and that room was sheetrock and screws and he is a, a contractor. So I said, well, I want to get that room straightened out um, first because that was the workshop at that time and um, then maybe this room but I'm really concerned about that room and he said, okay, well, you know, we'll see what we can do and I just I automatically dismissed it because that was the record. He comes in, what, three, four days later, and within a week and a half, that room is finished. When he finishes that, he comes in and he finishes this room. This was the part that I wanted to have done. This, this framing part, any of y'all wanted to off up there so that those bricks are part of the chimney that's sitting behind there in terms of that. And some students, we have some pictures of students uh, putting this up and helping to frame that. We've got some, some wonderful pictures of that. Um, this room right here is the map room. Um, most of these maps were gifts. This African Holocaust was, was a gift from a, from a fact, former uh, football, National League football player. Um, the John R. Clark poster, that came from, from um, uh, Baba Larry Obadelli Williams. Larry, 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 Baba Larry Obadelli Williams has contributed so much 
um, to this place in terms of uh, pictures and, and ideas. Uh, I've got this wonderful stereo over here. And for me, music is very important. And for students, music is very important because we will have days where we will be talking and I'll, I'll maybe mention uh, Gil Scott Heron, or maybe I'll mention Parliament Funkadelic, or maybe I'll, I'll, I'll mention Jerry Butler, what have you, and they haven't heard us, so we'll turn that into a music bit, and without a decent stereo, which we have uh, as a result of a gift from someone in the community, um, they can get an idea and a feel for uh, the kind of music that has created us as a people, that has moved us forward um, as a people. This stand right here, Made by students and myself. This stand right here, made by students and myself. Um, that door, this was not a closet. There was, there was nothing there but a wall. And we took that out. We cut out the space. We did. And inside of here, which is now the supply closet, we got a place for our DVDs and CDs. We got shelves on this side for supplies, shelves on this side for supplies, a light. Okay, this is that bookcase over there. That was a product of, of making. And everything that was made here, they assisted. These bricks over here. <laughs> this was one of my favorite projects. We got pictures of this too. The students helped me to clean that out. The students mixed the concrete that made the slab that went underneath those bricks. The students cleaned off those bricks and mixed the mortar that went in the bricks. And of course, I put the mortar down and put the bricks uh, down, but they were the ones who were in the process. This was us um, doing this together, and that waited, I guess, about four or five years to get done, but we were able to, to uh, set that up, and I think it looks nice. This door right here, there are also pictures of this. Help me to construct this door also, and the porch, of course, that, that, was, the, that was the major product. That porch took six years to make. There was six years worth of students. And that was a point I wanted to make before. We've, we've had uh, yeah, yeah. Six, six or seven uh, boys who got training in everything from drills to hammers to, to cutting, measurement, uh, carrying, dismantling, seeing how a wall is made. So, I mean, for, for me, it's, it's simple. And once you understand the structure of a wall, then, of course, you can build anything. And these guys were able to assist me in doing that. The, whenever a switch breaks here, whenever a sink uh, leaks, the children have to pull out their tablets and they come and of course they go through the process, take off, turn off the electricity, and we change the switch. And they get to understand that a, uh, what Jerry Clark was talking about, again Jerry Clark, what Jerry Clark was talking about where if, if we had adopted um, uh, Booker T. Washington along with, with Du Bois, then we wouldn't have other people coming in our community doing the things that we can do ourselves. This is like a 25, 26 cent switch in here. But if you call somebody in and do it, it's going to cost you $150 to change that switch. And of course, when you show, show people how to do that, but you tell them, of course, you don't go and do that. You got your parents, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, they get to see how it is done. They get to understand, like I was taught when I was coming up, that there's nothing that man has done that you can't do yourself. <laughs> oh, and the, the last thing I wanted to talk about was the, um, was the garden. The garden is very special. The garden is the brainchild of one of the Babas. And in fact, I'm very proud of one, this Baba because he, was, he wasn't a um, student at the college that I taught at, but he was a student at a neighboring college, and he was in a number of um, my classes. And he's the founder of Habershaw, which is really a garden neat thing that takes children to the continent that educates children is I'm, I'm very proud of of, of, Kashan, of knowing Kashan Myers um, he uh, wanted to teach the children about gardening and he's been coming here how many years now yeah three four, mm -hmm. uh, four at least at least four years he's been coming here now in the backyard as a result of him and his effort in working with the students and the students working with him as well as him teaching them worm anatomy and plant anatomy and every other thing on that board as well as, uh, I mean, he, he comes sometimes and I want to sit in his class because he talks about GMOs and he talks about uh, what's going on in the hip hop community. It's, it's a major discussion with him. And this, this is one of the community members, he's not getting paid for this. He comes here because he wants the children to be educated. He wants us to be a self-sustained community, a self-sustained people. Right now there are... 14 raised beds, uh, what, two by, at least two by six, one of them is four by eight. 
in the backyard where everything has been grown out there from broccoli to greens to collards to carrots, sweet potatoes, peas, beans. Um, I say broccoli again because I ate most of that. So I mean, it was, it was, it's, it's wonderful, and they get to learn about the different seasonal foods. So right now, it's, it's near the end of winter, so it's primarily greens that are growing out there now. But they've already started um, the seeds for the rest of the plants for the spring um, crop. So, and, and this garden has benefited the community in a number of ways. Um, and the folks who are trying to start their school, I think it's very important for, for them to have things that connect people. When you have a garden then you start connecting with a lot of people in the community and the children get involved. Maybe at first they don't want to get their fingers dirty, but after that first day, then they're begging you to go back out. Um, the, the food from the garden has been given to different neighbors in the community. It has been given to the, to the children and the families of the children. And we've eaten quite a bit of, uh, of the, the food. We've learned a lot about um, uh, how to grow and how to handle um, pests in the garden, and uh, pest really isn't the right word because technically we're the pests on the planet. Um, so the, the garden has been very instrumental. It is, it is the glue, and once a week, it takes over everything. Plus, it allows um, uh, me, if I may selfishly say so, it allows me to get in some exercise because I, I require them to at least let me have one of the raised beds for us, and I can grow things in there that I wanted. Last year I grew tomatoes. Hotel. Greetings. My name is Yao Baruti, and I'm the co-founder and co-director of Ankaben Institute, which is an African-centered homeschool tutorial program in Atlanta for children, fourth graders through twelfth graders. Here at Ankaben, we have a five-pronged approach. Uh, first of all, we are an African-centered program, and for us, that means that our focus daily is on teaching African values. Uh, we live in a Eurocentric society where European values dominate and um, in order to not be one of the sheep being led to the slaughter of embracing other people's values, we're teaching traditional African values to our children and daily critiquing and pointing out to them the European values that they're exposed to. And a major part of that is teaching them our story so that they are clear as to who we are traditionally as a people, not what they see now, but who we need to return to that re-Africanization process. Uh, definitely as an African-centered, any educational program, the goal is to provide a good academic foundation. And when we see children struggling or failing in school, generally, uh, the reason for that is, um, if there aren't other factors involved, that the child is missing some uh, part of the academic foundation on which everything else is built upon. So that's a daily concern. Three, uh, we definitely focus on our children having good uh, critical analytical thinking skills. We live in a society in which the public school system, children are rewarded for having good memories and it's rote memorization is the order of the day. But uh, our focus is to help our children learn to think because when they can think critically, we don't have to teach them each and everything. Their critical thinking skills will allow them to recognize what's African and what's un-African, what's good for them and what's destroying them, as well as to learn whatever academic uh, life skills that they need, because they will be able to think it through versus trying to memorize. Uh, fourth, we per, uh, focus on character personal development. Uh, we live in a society where morals are oftentimes missing, and in fact, immoral behavior is often promoted. So our daily um, concern is our students become recognized that they are African men and women in training and that they won't magically turn 18, 21 or any other age and become the type of strong man or woman that they want or need to be. It's a process and they have to learn that. And part of our teaching that is they daily say affirmations uh, 
a list of positive statements of who they should want to become to be able to be uh, important, valuable members to our community where they are assisting us in the re-Africanization process versus hindering us. Fifth on that list is uh, we're teaching life skills from home improvement projects, which the students have been working on over the years to, uh, in more recent years, the last uh, several years, working in the garden. And of course, being able to grow your own food is major. Without food, everything else is irrelevant. Morals and everything else, you won't uh, be alive. So those life skills are important. But I also would like to add that that program focuses on our children, and that's our major focus. But equally important, Ankhaben Institute also offers night classes online as well as here at the school for adults. And over the last several years, not only have adults attended those classes, We've had from a ser very serious five-year-old to teenagers who've taken classes, their lecture classes. So the students who are able to sit and learn as well. But all of these classes, most of them, the majority of them, have focused on books by Brother Baruti, which is an equal part of what we do in terms of our commitment to educating our people and for people who may never be able to take the class for whatever reason, uh, they're able to learn like us because his books are about him learning and passing on what he learns about what it means to be African. And in that way, um, we're all working together and finding, returning to our African way. We just want to thank the community for their involvement, for helping us to make this what it's supposed to be. Without them, obviously, we would not exist. So we are very appreciative to everyone in the community who has um, in the past, who is now, and who will continue or will be new to contributing to the survival of Akhavan Institute. We, we are very, very grateful. That's, I, I can't say that enough because without the community, we would not exist. We absolutely would not um, exist as, as an institution. And um, I believe, we believe that, that the support has come primarily because the community understands how serious we are about this. We're very, very serious about the business of raising, excuse me, of rearing warriors in the tradition of our ancestors. We, we don't have any time to play with that. Um, we need children who are ready for the front line, and that is what we see our mission and our vision as being. A baby for Odier.